Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to the Gems of Life show. My name is Fadwa. I am your host today. Listen, with tech, everything happens. I've been struggling logging into my Zoom today for a couple of hours. <laughs> so finally, go, I got working and I have a very special guest who was so patiently waiting for me. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding, Zara. Welcome. Thank you so much, Fadwa. Hey, tech happens. It's, uh, it's the virtual world, but I'm excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I was looking forward to just having you and be here. I know last time I was on your show and I thought, you know what, I'm just bringing you so you can just share your gems with us. <laughs> I, I can't wait. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. So for those, uh, our listeners and our viewers who don't know who you are, do you want to just share briefly who Zara is? Absolutely. I can do a quick introduction. So, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Zara Raza. I am, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm born and raised, I was born and raised in Pakistan, um, but been in Canada for the last 15 years. Um, and by profession, I'm in marketing, uh, and I work on very delicious confectionery brands. Uh, but in my personal life, I am a wife, uh, I am a cat lover, and I am a, a toastmaster like Fadwa. So uh, I'm here and I'm and that's Fadwa. That's how we met. I'm excited to, uh, to be here and talk to you about it. Yeah, wonderful. That's wonderful. I know we are fellow Toastmasters. So here we are. Who knew, right? Sometimes <laughs> the path we cross, you never know the kind of relationships form from those paths. Absolutely. Yeah. So you said you're a mother. I'm sorry, you're a, your wife. You are working in a marketing. You're doing Toastmasters on the side. How do you manage? Like, how do you shuffle? <laughs> <laughs> in a professional, you know, in the professional industry, and then you know, in your relationship, how do you shuffle between those two? I think it it takes a lot of commitment and it takes a lot of planning. So I have I realized if I don't if I'm not organized in my day, it's very easy for me to feel very overwhelmed. So I have very dedicated times to figure out what I want to do in my day. So I force myself to log out of work at 5 p.m. You know, that was very critical for me to just get stop working so that I have time to do other things. Uh, you know, my husband and I, we have a dedicated TV time, a TV hour where we have dinner together and we watch something together. That's my time with him. And there's if there's passions and things I'd like to do later on, Fadba, I make time for it. So I schedule like an hour every week or a couple hours every week and just catch up, whether it's on reading or working on my podcast or whatever that might be to just be able to allocate time and really be purposeful about it. You know, that's really key, allocating time for each part of your life. So you have your own podcast, which I know I was part of your podcast, which is, by the way, please go in and listen. And I know you will share the information where people can come in and just listen to your podcast. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You don't need to travel. Just come into Reza's, Zara's uh, show and listen. She'll take you around the world, okay? All right. So how do you do that? Because I'm a mother. I'm a single parent. I have two children. And sometimes you run out of time. <laughs> you know, I don't have a money in my life. So I have that spare time to do what I need to do. Because I know when you have somebody in your life, also there's that time that you have to carve out, just like you said, TV time, dinner time together. How important is it for us to carve out that time for the, pe the people around us? Like for you, you have your husband, for your podcast, for the work that you do, and to be really dedicated by five o'clock, you are logged out. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> You know what? I, I don't have any kids right now, Fadwa. And I think that's where, you know, I think what the commitment you've made to your family is, is so critical. And I try and do that with obviously my husband here, whatever I can spend time with him. But the one thing that I've realized is you have to find time for yourself in your day. So I'm a very ambitious woman, Fadwa. I could, I, I found myself, I would say maybe a few years ago where I was working until 11 p.m. at night. Not because I had to, but because I wanted to, because I love what I do. I wanted to work longer, wanted to work harder, go and climb the, the corporate ladder and, you know, be the best I can at my job. And very quickly, I realized that I was not paying enough attention to my health. I was not spending time with my family, not giving enough attention to my husband sometimes, right? I didn't have time. I just wanted to work, work, work and just you know, do the best I can and look like a rock star at work. And I very quickly realized that you just need to be very mindful of everything. And it's, a, it's the idea of balance. And your balance is going to be, it's, it's not going to be balanced if you're only focusing on one or the other. So what you have to do, so for example, on weekends, I used to work every weekend, by the way, 
I don't work now. And those weekends are my family time. So I go see my parents. I spend time with my husband. I go take walks. I do things that are good for my sanity and they have to be outside of work. Um, it could be passion projects. Passion projects are where I get my energy from. So my podcast, I do it because I love meeting people. So it's not really work. It's something that gives me energy. It's, it's almost like self-care. So it's a little bit about, and, and I'm, I, just a little trick for everybody is I have color-coded my calendar like crazy. So I have colors for everything in my life. And even visually, when you look at it and you're like, hmm, something's not working. I have too much of the reds, which is usually work, or too much of the green, which is usually relaxing. You're like, hold on, there's no balance. So I, I try and balance my calendar as much as possible every week. Yes, I love that. I love that. And, uh, you know, like you talked about color coding, because that it gives you, it gives you structure, right? Planning your day and planning... Um, not just your day, but the, the projects that you're doing, like you said, passion projects, doing things for you, things that bring you joy, things that fuel you. I love that. Oftentimes, especially for women, especially women from a cultural based women, we come from a place where you're a housewife and that's all you are and that's all you'll ever be. But for you to be able to get outside of that box and say, okay, you know what? I can be a housewife. I can be a wife to my husband, be really good and spend time and quality time together. But I can also do things for myself, things that will fuel me. Because when you fuel yourself, you come fully to him, right? Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. important. And I, it's, I love to see women who are empowered enough to make those kind of decisions and choices for themselves instead of just being what you are supposed to be, the norm of what a housewife should be. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good, really great point, Fadra. And I'm very lucky to have the parents that I did that supported uh, women to go out and work, women to be themselves, to be bold, uh, you know, and I'm very lucky that my husband's parents and my husband's mom taught him the value of sharing their responsibilities at home. So my husband likes to cook, which helps me manage my time because he's supporting me in, you know, cooking, cleaning, some of the other aspects of the home. So where I tell women, I always tell women is at the end of the day, women have a, have this, this unique ability to multitask. And I think it's a gift but at the same time, don't feel the pressure of doing everything on your own. I think we do feel that sometimes. We are the ones cleaning. We're the ones cooking. We're the ones working. We're the ones taking care of the kids. We're the ones taking care of the husband. We're the ones taking care of ourselves. And it can be too much. I think it is important to make time for yourself. And for yourself, it could be an hour. It could be two hours. It could be a weekend. Whatever you need for your own sanity. But I always encourage women is, is know that at the end of the day, it's your life. Yes, your kids are uh, with you and your husband's with you and your family's with you. But at the end of the day, if you are not in your best health, you can't do justice to any of your relationships. So make time for yourself and then try and tackle. And it, it's not an easy job, Fadra. And that's why my organization skills come in is I try and do it. And I'm a visual person, which is why I do color coding. But I've seen people make lists. I've seen people have uh, to-dos and, and notes around, you know, sticky notes on their, on their fridge. Like whatever helps you stay organized, do that. But every Sunday night, look at your calendar for the week and think about, okay, do I have time for myself? Do I have time for th doing things that I enjoy? Not what everybody else expects of me. Mm. Yeah. You know what I used to love raising, you know, as my, as a single parent, what I used to love is me time Ooh. <laughs> from a very young age. And people never understood that, you know, eight o'clock, my kids are in bed asleep and I have capped time for me eight to 10. And I go to bed at 10 o'clock for me. It was the best time. The most is 11. Right. Mm -hmm. But to put to give yourself that time, especially when you're just by yourself, especially for those single women raising children on their own, I always tell them, make sure you have me time. It's so important. Mm -hmm. And as a as a couple, this is the second thing that I always say, and you're actually doing it, is that making sure that you have not just me time, but we time, quality yeah. time, invest okay. on each other. I say even later on when children come. Mm -hmm. Women tend to forget their husbands. They take care of the children. They take care of the home. They take care of all the responsibilities. And I always say these kids will grow. They will all have their own life and they will move out. And if you have not invested in your relationship with your husband, you will become two strangers. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it happens all the time. So even to our yeah. listeners who are listening in today, man or woman, <laughs> 
carve out time. Don't wait up for the woman to, you know, for your partner to come in and carve that time for you. Carve out that time. Have those conversations at home saying, you know what, we need to have time for us. We need to have time for me. So you need to give the guy his time and you need to have your own time to refuel, to recharge, to reboot. So when you come back, you are full cup. You're not exhausted. And when you come, you're just giving the best of you instead of the least of you, <laughs> because that's all you got. <laughs> yeah. What great advice. I 100% agree with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, what are the things that you can, I know right now for you, you talked about your passion project, you know, like um, podcast, but there are those who are not as comfortable talking, like what we are doing, not too many people are able to do that live alone radio or be on uh, TV or um, YouTube. What are the com- some of the things that you think our listeners can benefit from? They can say, okay, maybe they didn't think of that creativity aspect of themselves. What are the mm-hmm. ideas that maybe you can help them with? Yeah, I think everybody's creative in their own ways, Fadva. I, a few years ago, I was quite nervous doing what we're doing here. You know, I, speaking didn't come, speaking, uh, I guess, as being recorded or speaking publicly or in front of large audiences didn't come as naturally to me as it does to some people. So for me, it was a bit more of a practice. I am a marketer, so I'm in the profession where I have to do this quite a bit. So I had to get over all my fears and say, hey, I have to be a bit more bold. I have to be a bit more confident. But I've seen people be creative and expressive in many other ways. I, I have a best friend who loves to do art. She's an HR, but she's an artist on the side. You know, she does it for herself. She doesn't do it necessarily to make money. She's got a profession, but that's her time to just unwind. And she just like does digital art and she's really good at it. So she does that. I have a friend who does, again, she has a profession, but she does things like event planning on the side. And she loves that. She enjoys it because she gets to meet people. I see people write and people write because they want to do it for themselves. It's the, a creative outlet. So what I would encourage people is think about, you know, what would you do if you weren't getting paid for it? And think about it that way. If no one was going to pay you, but you have all the time in the world, what is it that you would pick up and you would do? And many people would come up with an answer. It could be as simple as, you know what, I would play a piano or I would play, I would read, I would write a book or I would, you know, whatever that means for you. Right. I have, I know people who are volunteering because that's their passion. They want to give back to the community and they love it. They don't need to get paid for it. They love doing that. So whatever you think, oh my God, I, I would do this even if no one paid me, that's your answer. I think that's your creative outlet. That's your passion, right? So to do it, make time for it. You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't have to be great at it. You don't even have to share it with the world. Do it for yourself because you're going to feel so satisfied at the end of it. You're going to feel like I just spent the best hour doing something that I love. So when you talk about my podcast, Fadra, I, I love, love, love meeting people. And COVID is hard because I, I was stuck. And as much as I love my husband, you're stuck with you know two people at home. And it's, mm-hmm. it's not the easiest thing for the last year and a half. And I'm sure everybody has their own challenges. But for me, I just wanted to meet people. I just wanted to hear stories. I just wanted to have some real conversations that were outside of work. <laughs> and, and my podcast was an excuse for that. So you know this, you know, I, it, it's not being monetized. It's being done at my pace. I'm meeting people and asking questions the way I would like it and what the conversations are flowing more organically, but it's just such a great, great creative outlet. And I'm doing it for myself, not to get recognition or anything. It's just because I love talking to people. Yes. And I love your podcast. You're just bringing the world to us, <laughs> especially now when we're not able to travel. Right. And that's a perfect example of how you can utilize just something fun you enjoy it and you engage with others, especially when we are so separated and isolated from each other. What a great way to actually bring people to you and bring the message. Thank you. I I can, I can tell a little bit more about it for those who don't know, but the idea was exactly what Fadva said is we couldn't travel in these times. um, And with everything that's going on politically and, and otherwise is it's just too many boundaries and there's too many walls and we just keep creating even more of that to separate the world and break the world into tiny pieces and whether it's religions or countries or faiths or whatever it is we're just breaking people apart and it's just it's terrible because at the end of the day we're all humans and I, I just felt the need of we need to come together as humanity we need to understand each other's perspectives and uh, you know where they're coming from their beliefs and, and just be one and my podcast was a great way yes it's a travel podcast to talk about the country and talk about the places but the stories you're hearing are what people are living what they believe what they follow uh, you know what they what they love about their cultures and 
it's just, it's so human. And that's what I love about it. So yes, I'm learning about the country, but frankly, I could learn about the country on Google, right? And this was more than just learning about the country. It's about learning about the people. So it's people's stories and it's about traveling the world. We're going to visit every single country virtually uh, and talk to people across the world and learn about their countries, learn about the cultures, learn about their stories uh, and put it together in a podcast. And it's called uh, My Digital Trek. Uh, and it can, it's uh, on all the podcast apps. Yes, that was, it's beautiful. I love your podcast. I love listening and learning more about other cultures and other people. And just like you said, it's stories, sharing our stories. And I had the honor to be on your show. And uh, I, I talked about Somaliland. I can't wait to listen to, to the podcast <laughs> once it's out there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say to somebody who I actually met and I know there's so many women out there. I, I was at a dentist appointment and I was talking to one of the hygienists. She's a, she's a housewife, not ha well housewife, but also working professionally, has three children. So we were talking and she's like, yeah, when some finish here, I'm done at six. I go home, spend time with the children. By the time my husband comes home, I'm already asleep, right? She says, we don't even see each other at all. Um, so she has that kind of a hectic schedule. And there's a lot of women who, who are going through that schedule. You know, they're, they're working, they're home, they're working at home, either outside or home. It doesn't really matter. But their partners, whatever time the shift is, sometimes there's that conflict of shifts and they don't get to see each other. They don't get to spend one another. She says, we're just like two strangers. We're just roommates. We're sharing the space. And mm -hmm. Pretty much the intimacy is gone. The relationship is kind of hmm, so-so. Mm -hmm. How can this kind of relationships be reignited? How can we reignite this kind of relationships? How can we um, bring that spark back to this kind of relationships? Because I know she's not the only one suffering mm -hmm. right now. Even those who are at home, even those who are working from home, because when you have children, they have school. So you want to make sure their homework, they're doing everything. You have cleaning, you have like, we are super women, right? When we want to multitask, we, we can do all those things and we wear many hats. So we take all these responsibilities to a point where we feel so exhausted that we neglect ourselves and our spouse. What would you say? Uh, what would be yeah. your message? Mm -hmm. It's a tough one, Fadwa. And, and like I said, I don't, I don't have kids, so I can even, I can understand how difficult it is for women who have even younger kids, not just kids, and, and to be able to make that time. So I, I can totally understand how difficult it must be. Um, I'll tell you some of the things that, that work for, for, for my husband and I and for my friends who do have kids and what I've seen they do. It's a, it's a little bit about compromise uh, here, Fadwa, is, is, you know, I'll give you an example. A few a few years ago, my husband worked in a, in a manufacturing plant, and that meant he's leaving at six in the morning for work because his shifts were quite a bit longer, and it started early. I'm so not a morning person, Fadwa, but I knew by the time he would come back, I'm dead tired. The last thing I want to do is have a conversation because my day is done, his day is done, and I just don't want to talk at 9 p.m. It's just we're done after a long day. So I used to wake up in the morning for him and have breakfast with him. Now, I hated wake up, waking up in the morning. I did, because I'm not a morning person. I, just, yeah. I did not want to do that. But that was just such good time because, it, it, it was, yes, I was making a bit of a compromise and I would wake up a little bit early and, and we'd have nice breakfast together. But it was a nice start to the day. Some days he would stay up late because he knew or he would come back and he would try and stay up late and we have dinner together. So we were trying to do a little bit of things to make time for each other, to work around our hectic schedules. And yes, none of us, you know, neither of us absolutely loved it. It wasn't the ideal situation. And, you know, I would not wake up at six in the morning if I, you know, if I didn't have to. But I did because it's like, you know what? At the end of the day, your relationships matter. You do what you do in order to make it work. Now, if you have kids involved, you may need to go even above and beyond and make even more compromises. But it's about it's about accommodating each other. And I think that's what relationships come down to is accommodating whether it's schedules, accommodating moods, accommodating, you know, how what people are going through physically, mentally, whatever that is. And I think that's honestly, that's what's worked for me. So, uh, and like I said, my husband helps me out in house chores, right? So weeks that I have really busy, I'm really busy at work, you know, that's where compromise kicks in. He knows I'm not going to have time to make dinner. And I don't think, you know, he loves making dinner or anything, but he does it because he does it. He knows I'm going to be extremely busy. So I think life is a lot about compromise in order to make relationships work. And it has to be both ways. It shouldn't always be the woman compromising. It should always be the guy and or, or should also be the guy and, and be able to agree on, hey, I'll, 
you know, let's make this work and let's put an effort. And I know it, it, it's easy to say and it's harder to do, but I think it's a little bit of, it's about small gestures, you know, and, and doing that more consistently. Yes, absolutely. And you talked about um, accommodating and compromising. There's, there's, a new, there's a new word for me that I've taken off my vocabulary or my um, in life, actually, is compromise. <laughs> I prefer mm. accommodate. Mm, <laughs> we yeah, accommodate I like that. each other. We are co- I love what you said, right? Accommodating. And accommodating instead of compromise. I feel compromising, you're, you're, you're taking something away from yourself for mm. somebody else, right? Mm. And I've done that so many times where to a point where there's nothing there left for mm. you to do. But I love accommodating. I love that because mm. now you're doing something to help each other, to support mm. one another. You know, so for me, that is there's more inspiration there. There's more motivation when we mm. are accommodating each other's needs, right? Mm. Than compromise. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just compromised. I'm like, I'm done compromising. Yeah. <laughs> one, one feels a lot more active, like accommodating is, you know, you're taking charge and you're yes. accommodating each other. Yes. Compromise just feels like you've given up. You're absolutely you're right. Up. Compromise right? just seems like... <laughs> I, I do like that. It's a very good point. I love yeah. it. And I'm glad you mentioned both because I'm thinking I've never used accommodating. So now when you said, hmm, I said, okay, I don't like compromising, but accommodating, mm-hmm. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's all about, it's all, at the end of the day, it's a partnership. You know, yes. it's not me doing everything for you or you doing everything yeah. for me. It's a partnership. Yes. So that's where accommodating literally means yes. that I'm going to work around work to accommodate you in my life and vice versa. Right. So yes. Yes, I love that. I love that. You know, when you talk about your husband helping with the chores or cooking, I come from a community where <laughs> it meant it's shunned upon for men to be in the kitchen. I don't know if you can relate to that. I remember years ago, uh, back in 1994, actually, no, 96, 96, I was still in England and my father had just joined us. And he had lived in Saudi Arabia for about 10 years. Okay. So he came with that mindset. So he comes home. He sees my cousin, it was Ramadan, and we used to have the boys, my brothers and my cousin, they, we finish cooking, we eat, the boys that take turns to clean. One will mm. clean the kitchen, one will vacuum, do all that stuff, right? So it happens to be my cousin's turn that night. Mm. And my father walks in and sees my cousin washing dishes. <laughs> and we were upstairs, sitting upstairs, and my, I, we just had the door bang, right? We come downstairs, nobody is home. And we're thinking, okay, something happened. We walked in the kitchen, air, all the dishes were all over the place. So immediately we understood, but we didn't understand the extent how my father took it. Later on, our father came home, knocked at the door, sat down with my, you know, my, my sister and my mother. And he looked at my mother and he said, do you know that young man you asked to wash the dishes? If I were to die today do you know he would marry you how dare you ask him to wash the dishes and we were like whoa <laughs> mm. that is the, that is the mindset right and it was like a shame how you know how dare you if, a, if women in our community walked into the kitchen today and saw him washing the dishes it would bring a lot of shame into our family's mm. name but now it's been 20 over 24 years mm. my father goes in the kitchen and makes his cup of tea, (laughs) you know? So there's that, it just shows that we can grow, we can learn and we can get out of these barriers that cultural barriers and belief system that the way we grew up, girls and women are only belong to the kitchen and men don't, right? So I, I commend your husband for stepping up and being the man that he is to support you and, uh, and help you, you know, along the way. Because I think we cannot do it on our own as women. We cannot do it on our own. Because especially when you're yeah. in a professional setting and you yeah. have responsibilities at home, we are only human. We are not superhuman, yeah. Yeah. right? And yeah. we do need help. And also for us women to actually step up and ask. There's yeah. nothing wrong with asking. So sometimes, I don't know, it's, been, it's in your mind and you have the dishes and you're hoping that he will read your mind so he can wash the dishes instead of just staying. And then when that doesn't happen, we get upset with them. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know? but you know what? You, you said something really powerful there, Fadwa. I come from, so I'm originally from Pakistan and there's a lot of women there who are, it's a, it's a cultural thing, right? Like men are the, they're going to go and, and earn the, the, the money for the house. And they're sort of the, they're not going to be doing the house chores is 
a general sort of idea there um, still. And I, I think I give a lot of kudos to mothers who are raising their sons in a way that they understand that it's a shared responsibility. The times are gone when women used to only take care of home. Women today are working. Women today have side hustles. Women today have other things going on besides just taking care of the kids and the chores, right? There's other things to life. And, and to your point, like it, it is about women empowerment. I think women are feeling that they can go and accomplish a whole lot more, which is all true. So it goes, it, it's a responsibility of us as as you know, future parents, as uh, even as like siblings, as you know, cousins, whatever you want to call it, to be able to teach the future generation that it's about shared responsibility. And I give kudos. Yes, I absolutely give kudos to my husband. But I'll tell you a story. When I first got married, you know, I was told the same thing. I my husband has, um, you know, he's is one of the five kids, and there's a lot of boys in the family. And I was told the same thing: is oh my god, like you know, you may have to go and prepare breakfast and dinner and lunch and all that great stuff. I remember the first time I went over to my mother-in-law's place and I woke up at early in the morning trying to make breakfast for everybody because I'm like, oh my God, that's what I'm supposed to do as a newly married like woman in the house, or a bride in the house. And I remember my mother-in-law watching me quietly as I made the breakfast. She didn't say anything. She was quiet. She was quiet. And then after I was done making breakfast and as I was, remember, I'm not a morning person. So it was already hard for me to wake up in the morning and then make <laughs> breakfast for the family, which yeah. by the way, I was making eggs and I had ne I, I don't eat eggs. So it was like a whole new thing for me, which I was like, oh my God, I'm making eggs. What's going on here? Anyways. And then she called me and she's like, come here. And she's like, look, in my household, I've taught every single man in the home to make their own breakfast, to heat up their own lunch and to have their own dinner. We don't do this thing in our home. So don't wake up and make breakfast. This is not my part of the family. This is not what I taught my sons. I taught my sons to be independent and share the responsibility with their sisters, with their mother, with their wives. So you sleep in. I know you're not a breakfast person. You sleep in. You're going to make their own breakfast. And they're going to help with the lunch. And they're going to help with the dinner. And that was the biggest learning for me, where I was like, she was my mother-in-law who could have said, nope, you have to do this and this and this and this and this. But no, she was a woman. And she was looking at me as a woman who had a career who wanted to do other things. And she's like, nope, it's about shared responsibility and make sure my son helps you out at home and make sure my son's son does everything that you're doing at home. Because I know you also have a, you also working, you also have other things going on. And that I, I commend the mom, you know, I give a lot of credit to my mother-in-law for raising her sons that way that my, my husband today, it doesn't feel like work to him. It feels like I'm a member of the household. I got to do what she's doing. And it's just part of the household, right? So I think what we could do better, all of us, you're right, it's part of the culture, but how do we do better for future generations mm -hmm. and remind them that women have the same rights as men. And the times are gone when men had these, these other powers and responsibilities and rights and women have the same today. And, and we should empower women, our daughters to go and achieve you know, whatever they want and our sons to be able to be supportive. Absolutely. I love that. And you're so true. It's so true that, you know, the, the kids that come from our homes, how we raise them depends on how we empower them. Right. So if we bring the cultural, I have a daughter and son. So if I treat my daughter different from my son, how is that possible? How am I empowering him? Right. Yeah. So even for my daughter, she looks at me sometimes. She's like, you spoil him sometimes. And sometimes then I have to back off and I say, OK, am I? <laughs> because yeah. I'm, I've, she has certain responsibilities, but then it's like it's a reminder for me. OK, I need to break that shift, the cultural shift to empower yeah. my sons enough so that he can take responsibility at home where he yeah. can participate and contribute at home. So that when he leaves and sets out to the world, he's able to do that for himself and for his future partner. So it's up to us. Absolutely. You're very right. It's up to us as parents to actually create that kind of environment for our children and say, okay, doesn't matter. You're boy or girl. You have equal responsibilities in the home. Yeah. Because I remember the guys, we used, to, we, used to, we used to put food on the table. We'll, we'll be the last to eat. Okay. <laughs> Which I, which by the way, I have a whole other issue with, right? right? Like women are the ones who were taking care of the kids. Should yeah. women and the kids be the first to eat? Right? No. That was the thing in my culture too. Like men yeah. go to the table first and eat first. And I was like, yeah. hold on, why? Yeah. You know, women yeah. are the one with the kids. You know, mm -hmm. The kids are the ones that are hungry. Like women are the ones who just prepared the entire meal. Yeah. Let us eat first. Right? <laughs> you know? like, you, you stood there for hours <laughs> preparing the different meals. You put it out on the table. All the boys and the guys and the men will come and sit the food, eat first. The children will sit in the corner. The women will be the last to eat. 
which yeah. I don't think it's, you know, and we've been breaking that. So even when I go to England, mm-hmm. when I go, we have family, we just put everything and we sit down, even though we'll be serving, but the guys tend to be cleaning after. <laughs> so we may serve and they clean up, you know? Yeah, we have the same rule now. <laughs> we have the same rule. And I'll tell you a little trick. And yeah. my husband does that. Anytime uh, you go to a setting where they're like, hey, men, why don't you go help yourself? My husband grabs a plate and he calls me and he's like, hey, what do you want? And now they see a man helping a woman or serving the woman for the food. And suddenly everybody's like, whoa, what just happened? But it, it changes people's perspective. Because yeah. the idea is, why is it that he's eating first when I'm here hungry? He's like, let's have it together. And he always does that. And it makes such a huge difference because now the other men are like, oh, maybe we should offer a plate to our wives, right? right? Like, and, and suddenly you're eating together rather than one after the other. Yeah. Yes. So it's that shift. We need to really change a lot of stuff. And yeah. since we are both, in the arena, in the professional arena, we are both coming in, making an income. And it's not just about who brings the most money. It's about contributing, yeah. contributing at home and in the professional setting. Right. So and we are, we're not superhuman. We can we can do both. And as women, we wear many hats and we can multitask. But it's finding that balance as well. So we are not super exhausted where we didn't we neglect our health. And you talked about health and it's so important to fill that cup for you and be in a very uh, loving, healthy, mindful way to be really present with yourself. And then you're able to bring the best of you to your partner, to if you have children, to your children as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a self-care is so important, Padra. And you're a mother, you may be able to relate to it as women have the tendency of just give, you know, we like to give, 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 give our all to our family, give our all to our husbands, give our all to everybody else. What about us, right? So it comes back to kind of what you said is is the self-care piece of it. It might be a few minutes in your day. It doesn't matter. But do something to find some time to say, me, you know, me. At the end of the day, if I don't take care of myself, I can't do anything to and for anyone. So yes, I think it's a tendency of women to just give, 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 but also take. I think you have the right to say me and I need my time and I need my space and I need a few minutes and I need to enjoy my snack alone or I need to watch my show alone or I need to, you know, whatever you need to do, do it for yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And there may be somebody listening to our show right now or watching. There may be a woman listening and saying, hey, hold on. I'm not in the pro. I'm, I'm, I'm just a housewife. I don't have a profession. I'm a housewife. I have children. I have a husband. I'm doing all these things you left me alone, you know, what can I do to, yes, I'm doing all this self-care, but I've lost a part of me. I've lost a passion, you know, I would say whoever is listening to this and you're feeling that way, I would say, start doing things that bring joy to you, Mm. your hobbies. You know, we tend to forget. And I've been there. I've been there. I lost myself because I thought, okay, being a housewife, being a mother is all I was, but you're not you're not just defined to that role. You're so many things and you can find all those things that you are, but take time to find what brings you joy. What is it that you're passionate about? What are the hobbies that you love? I used to love reading, Zara. I used to love reading. I stopped reading for how many years, (laughs) you know? Yeah, because I just invested all my time in, you know, being at home and being present with the children and, you know, all this, but then I lost a part of me. And when you lose a part of you, it's so hard to get back to it. So I say, just start going back to what that brings you joy. What what is it that brings you joy? What is that you're once passionate about? You love painting, go get some paint today and start painting. You love reading, go grab that book and start reading. What is it? You you love walking out, go for a jog, go just do something. You want to volunteer, do something for you that brings you joy. Just do something for you that brings that spark, that lights up the spark within you. Because if you do that, oh, I'm telling you, it's just going to set you off in the right path. We've been off track for a very long time. So let's go back on track. <laughs> yeah, our, absolutely. Our I think anybody, anybody who's a housewife, you guys have the toughest job. You have the toughest job, hands down, because you are dealing with so much more than what we do at work, to be honest, you know, so at work, we have a ton of support work, we have teams at work, we have so many people helping us with all the work we're doing. Anybody who's at home, I give them so much kudos. My mother is a housewife, and I I, I see how much she does. And I am incredibly, uh, you know, support, like, we can be supportive all we want, but I know she's still the person doing it a lot of it on her own. So to, to your point, find time to be able to do things that you actually enjoy. So for example, my mother 
on the side, she likes to do some fundraising activities and that she loves it. She does it because she loves it. No one's asked her to do it, but it allows us to give back and connect to the community, help with the causes. And she does that on the side. So, you know, she, she'll find time for it. Even if it's an hour a day, she'll actually spend time figuring out what is the next event she's going to plan? What is the next activity she's going to plan? Find whatever, whatever gives you energy, find whatever gives you joy. Uh, because this is going to make your days a lot easier. And, and don't feel like you need to go have a nine to five job to feel like you're contributing to yourself and to the home. You're doing so much more than that. So even if you're a housewife, you're adding value to your home in many ways. Think about how you add value to your own life. Yeah, absolutely. And just small thing, just one thing, just one thing, just to contribute to you, right? And just bring you that inner joy, I'm telling you. Yes. I always say, you know, just you have kids doesn't mean your life ended. <laughs> and most of us, my life actually, it stopped at having my children. That was it. That was it. So I have just rediscovered myself. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful journey since 2017. I've just gone back to that journey of rediscovering and finding out who I am and what that inner joy and my inner essence is and my truest self. And I'm standing mm -hmm. in my truest self today. And I feel I bring more value to my children mm -hmm. and those around me because I am where I'm supposed to be. So sometimes we just need to go through that journey. Wow, it's so amazing to have you here, Zara. <laughs> and I love this. I love this, you know. So what are the things that um, I know you have a podcast, you have, you have your work, you know, your marketing um, job. What are the other things you look forward to? What is the other thing that is your next path that you're looking to explore? Yeah, I, uh, I have been thinking a lot about, and, and this is personally for me, and maybe some of you guys can relate with it too, but when you're in a nine to five job, Fadwa, we're doing a lot of things for just ourselves. You know, we're thinking about just me, me, me all day, my career, my job, what I love, what I want to do. And, and especially if you're single and or you don't have kids yet, you know, you're spending a lot of time just on me. So I'm realizing my shift in my life is, is how do I give back? And how do I think about others? And, and it doesn't have to be only with money. I feel like people think about money the minute they think about, I, I want to give back. Well, it's not just about money. I can do it through my experience, through my knowledge. Sometimes you can literally just be a shoulder to someone who just needs to talk. And how do you actually try and give back? So one of the things we I just started in the pandemic, Fadwa, was uh, something called Brandcast. And Brandcast is a little community that we started for people who are looking for jobs. How many people were out there who were just trying to figure out how do I land internships in this economy? There's so many immigrants who came to the country wondering, how do I break in? How do I, how do I find you know, the right opportunities? There are folks who need help with interviews. There's students graduating with so much debt and have, and have no way to go find proper jobs. And the idea was, okay, what I can help bring is those connections and those, that resources that I can give for free to folks to be able to go and learn and take advantage of and be able to go land their jobs. So, uh, you know, in fact, we created a scholarship recently with the Schulich School of Business. And the idea is, you know, any funds we raise, we're going to actually help a student who has come to the country who is trying to establish their career in business. So it's not meant to be a, a this is completely the initiative is to be able to give back with, you know, not only ourselves, but, with, but connect them with the right resources and professionals to be able to get there. So I'm very excited about where that's going, Fabra, because I see this humongous potential of, honestly, you just need to help one person, right? And that one person helps one more person. And that one person helps one more person. And you can imagine what that becomes, right? And I think all of us have the ability and also the right ambition to be able to give back, but not everybody knows how. Not everybody knows, oh my God, do I have to create a whole company? Do I have to create? No, you don't. You just need to reach out to one other person and help them. And that's what Brandcast was, is, you know, we literally was just reaching out to people and saying, hey, come talk to us. We don't have, a, we're not charging you. We don't have a ton of resources, but I have 10 years of marketing knowledge. I can share some of that with you. I have some industry connections. I can connect you to them. So what can, whatever we can do in our life to be able to give back a little bit, there's nothing more satisfying than being able to give back. And I think that's what, that's what I've been trying to do. And I know through the stories that you are sharing as part of this program, you're doing the same things. You're empowering people to be able to share their stories. And I think, hey, who knows? Someone else can benefit from their story, right? So it's incredible what you're doing as well. Yeah, thank you. That's amazing. That's really great. And I think uh, after this, I have, I have a, gr a group of women that I want to connect you with as well. 
Yeah. I truly believe we all have that opportunity. We have the opportunity and capacity to make an impact, to help someone. And if we reach out to one person, we've not only reached out to that one person, we reached around the people around them. Yeah. When that person changes, develops and grows from where they are, you have elevated the entire family members mm -hmm. and the people around them. So just one person at a time, and you have no idea the transformation that will come out of it. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. And I would love to support you in the work that you do for sure. Wow. Well, so yeah, how, I appreciate it. Yeah. So you have a podcast. How can people go in and listen to your podcast or participate or even be part of your podcast? Actually, that's a great point. So uh, my podcast is called My Digital Trek. Uh, you can go on any of the podcast apps, uh, you know, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple, whatever you have, and to search up My Digital Trek, and it's going to come up, and you can listen to it on your phone. Uh, each episode is about 20 minutes, so it's not very long. It's going to be easy, and we're doing a different country every single time. You can, if you're trying to log in from your computer, you can literally type in mydigitaltrek.com, and you can go on the website, and you can listen to it there. Uh, what we can do, Fadwa, is maybe as part of this, I, I will send you the link where people can actually sign up to be part of the journey. I got a lot of countries to go, guys, so I'm looking for recommendations tell me connect me with the right people and let's have a chat and the chat is totally informal you can listen to the podcast and see we're just talking about you talking about your story talking about your culture your city and it's meant to be a very informal chat uh, but maybe I can send you that link Fadwa and you know feel free to check me out on, on LinkedIn uh, Zara Raza and connect with me and I'd be happy to help you uh, in your professional journey in your job search whatever that might be and, and give back in any way I can. Yes, absolutely. I love that. Send me the link. I'll share that. And uh, please connect with Zara. She has, she's so easy to talk to, so fun to talk to, I'm telling you. And she gives you that space to just share your story and your country and your culture. And let me tell you, it's a great way to share your story and your country on her podcast. Absolutely. Wow. Anything else? Any last gems you want to leave with our listeners and viewers, Zara? Yeah, I think uh, I had a lot of fun talking to you, Fatwa. I think this was so good. And the, the last thing I'd say is, you know, make yourself a priority. And the reason I say that is there's going to be so much that's going to be thrown at you, no matter what life stage you're in, specifically women. But I think it applies equally as much to men and, and anybody at any life stage. But make yourself a priority because at the end of the day, your life is a gift and you're only going to get one of them right? So make yourself a priority and make sure that at the end of the day, you feel like I've done something for myself. I feel great. Yes, I've done for everybody else. But I am also a gift. You know, I am God's made me and sent me on this world in this world. And I have to do something for myself and I have to try and make time for myself. And it's okay. It might sound selfish, but it's completely okay. You need it for your sanity. You need it for your own energy. You need it. You need to find your own joy. Um, that's it. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. Find your own joy. Wow. You know how many of us are struggling to go through that and just find our own joy, but it takes work. And believe me, it's possible. I have found my joy and you too can. Zara is living in her joy right now. She's sharing, she's spreading her joy with everyone. And that's what, that's the gift. The gift of giving back is spreading the joy with others. Thank you for being here. I enjoyed talking to you, uh, talking to you. And just, I know it was brief. <laughs> we didn't have the hour long, but uh, I truly enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll have some other time where you're able to come in and we can talk about other stuff for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me and, and continue doing what you're doing. You're inspiring and empowering people more than you know. So keep, keep doing what you're doing. And thank you for inviting me today. Thank you. Thank you. So are you. So are you. And each one of us has the ability to inspire. And what I always, I have a tagline on my show. I say, aspire to inspire. I think we should all aspire to inspire. That should be something that we should all aspire to do. Well, everyone else, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for being in our space. I hope you picked a gem or two from our show. And as always, you can join us on CKMS Radio 102.7 FM every Friday from six to seven. And you can join our show on YouTube channel, The Gems of Life Show. Subscribe to us, like, comment, share. You can find us on Facebook, The Gems of Life Show. And anytime you wanna connect with our guests, all the information will be there. 
to connect to Zara. You can actually connect to her podcast to join in, fill in the application form. There's a process that you go through. Let me tell you, you too can add your gems of your life on her podcast as well. So connect with us and take care, stay well and safe. Aspire to inspire. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.